guys! Welcome back. Let's play Final Fantasy VI. Last time we defeated Haydn and finished up almost all the remaining side quests. There is only one left. In between times, I did a couple of things. One of which was uh, bet all of the ninja stars I had, which was I think about 20 of them, in order to get tax stars. It's basically the same thing, but a little bit stronger. You fight the Chaos Dragon, and you basically just use the perfect evade setup. I've given it to Edgar in this case because he has less spells to cast, so he'll actually physically attack more often. The only thing that can actually hit him in this case is me. It's not a 100% perfect setup for this particular fight, but that pretty much does it. I also got the EO Rage for Gaw on the belt. Um, and I bet some other items here at the uh, Coliseum as well. I bet two pod bracelets for hero rings, fighting Hemophyte, we've already fought him before, you can use the same setup for that. Um, I re bet all remaining Genji gloves, save for one, I do want to keep one, uh, and I bet them down the line for Thunder Shields and then later for Genji Shields, I've already shown... I'm pretty sure I've shown all those fights. Um, if I remember correctly, the Thunder Shield... Just take a quick look here to double check. I'm pretty sure the Thunder Shield for the Genji Shield is something I've already shown. Uh, for whatever reason, the Striker always shows question marks, even though you just get the Striker back. Uh, after Shadow is no longer there, you'll fight Chupon instead. And I believe it's a more difficult fight, but to be honest, I've never really fought Chupon. I pretty much ignored the, uh, the Coliseum on my initial playthrough of the game years and years ago. But uh, ever since I've learned about all the things you can do with it, I've always just used a guide instead. So yeah, if you bet this, you fight Outsider. You can use Setzer with dual trumps there. Uh, even the Perfect Evade setup's not really your best bet there. Uh, so anyway, I bet uh, those down the line just showed you there. And so yeah, you can see I've got 20 of them now. You could bet more, you could bet less. You don't have to do it at all. You could buy more Ninja Stars if you want. I'm just gonna bet the 20 that I had. And I've moved all of my throwing items up. I've got uh, some additional of other stuff. I'll probably get more later. I'm not particularly worried about it right now. I also went back to Jador and bought two snipers and a partisan. Uh, and I bought a third pair of sprint shoes in Albrook. Now, the reason why I did this is in preparation for the final dungeon. Uh, sniper is a really useful weapon to have because it can do triple damage to floating enemies and for some reason there's a lot of floating enemies in the second half of this game. Anyway, with that being said, there's one other thing I wanted to point out. I'm not sure if I've done this wrong before, but I do want to at least talk about it because I was kind of confused at why my damage wasn't so great. I was using the Illumina, and instead of the Black Belt, I had on the Offering. Now, the problem with the Offering is it disables certain aspects of the damage calculation. And it's not so much the damage calculation as it is the special features of the weapon. Now, Illumina, some of the stuff maintains. However, it's auto-critical does not. It's auto-critical by expending MP does not carry over through the offering. So you'll actually do pretty much the exact same amount of damage, but you'll hit four times instead of once. Uh, so your auto-critical will double your damage. Equipping the Offering cuts each hit in half. So we have 100% with Critical goes up to 200%, and then we have four attacks at 50% strength because they don't Critical. So it's basically the same amount of damage regardless. So there's no real need to set that up. If you do want to use the Offering with the Illumina, or not the Offering, um, if you want to have like a really powerful attack set up with the Illumina, I would recommend putting it on lock with a Genji Glove. Putting him in the front row and just letting him unleash, unleash absolute hell on anything. It's not the most survivable strategy, but my god is the damage great. The Valiant Knife is great when his HP drops, it's great regardless. And the thing with the Genji Glove as opposed to the Offering is the Genji Glove lets you attack with each weapon at full power. Oddly enough, if you remove one of the weapons, his damage is now 70% of what the Valiant Dive would do normally. It's really weird that way. I have no idea why that happens. Anyway, with that said, let's get our party together. 
Oh yeah, and if you're uh, not using the cheap strategy in the Colosseum like that, the Chaos Dragon is weak to ice, has 9,013 HP, and yeah, so you can try and take it out that way, if you so desire. Anyway, like I said, we are finally going to go do it. Let's go over my setup. First things first, get somebody, it doesn't matter who, cast the float spell. You want everybody floating for this. As far as spells, work on whatever you want. Uh, I am working on Raiden with you to learn quick. Uh, you're working on Palador briefly. I don't even know if I'll eventually learn those spells or not. I was going to set her to work on Bahamut or maybe Alexander, but as you can see, those are both occupied. And, well, she's learned pretty much everything else. Uh, over here, we're just about to finish working on Bahamut. And what else? And you're working on Alexander, just so somebody's working on Alexander. And yeah, that's pretty much all for that. As far as equipment goes, whoever you're giving uh, Raiden to, I'm giving the Economizer, so I'll be swapping it around as we learn things. Everyone else is going to get full wall ring set up, as much magical of aid as I can muster, and hero rings if I don't have an, eco an Economizer on. As I said before, this is a magic-only dungeon. We're going to want all types of protection against it. You can take a look at my magic block here. Everyone has pretty high magic block. Unfortunately, Realm is on the lower end of things, but I don't have another Aegis Shield to uh, pass around. We're making use of both those Minervas, making use of the Cat Hood for that extra money. The BMS suits are just really, really good. And you don't really want to be using the Gaia gear, so Float is probably your best bet. And sadly, that means no free accessory slot for the Sprint Shoes. So this slow, boring dungeon that consists of just stairs, 100 floors of stairs, is going to be me walking up 100 floors of stairs. And yes, I'm sorry, but I need those accessory slots. We need wall rings to try and survive. In here, we find our first battle. Level 50 magic. Uh, it's a little powerful to start off the, uh, the whole thing with. Let's get my notes going here. All right, level 50 magic. All of the, ma the enemies here are just level X magic, save for one and then the bosses. Uh, also, save for one of the bosses, all the enemies in this area can be MP killed, though there's only one you'll actually want to try and do that with, so for the most part, just ignore that. And level 50 is level 57, okay? Uh, weak to fire, pearl absorbs poison, susceptible to instant death, as well as being undead, so you know how we deal with that. One of the really cool things about this area is all of the enemies here are, well, they don't give any experience. It's just magic points, so you do not have to worry at all about gaining levels. Here is a safety bit. You may have wanted to come here with the Moogle Charm earlier to get this. It's like the Memento Ring, but everyone can equip it. Uh, so we finally have instant death protection on somebody who isn't Realm and... Uh, and shadow there, so that's really, really nice. And what was I going to do? I was going to swap espers. You do not need Bahamut anymore. What am I going to make you work on? Okay, I'll reset everything up there. Now, if you go next to the switch, I could never remember which side it's on, or next to the chest there, there is a hidden switch leading to a hidden room. Considering this is Final Fantasy VI, I'm sure somebody told us about this at some point or another. I just don't remember who. We have... Uh, oh yeah, by the way, like I said, this is indeed a magic-only area. They have sealed off pretty much every other command. Uh, there are a number of enemies, and by number I mean three, that have the reflect, innate auto-reflect in this area, so you are going to want to be aware of that. One of them is level 20 magic here. Uh, Oddly enough, level 20 magic is level 51. Not sure how that works. And absorbs poison. It has auto reflect, can be MP killed, and can is susceptible to instant death. And who else did we have in this fight? We have level 40 magic. Level 40 magic is level 55. Again, weird. 
Weak to Bolt, Absorbs Poison, has Auto Float, not susceptible to its death. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to Terra's turn. Whoever has the Raiden Summon should have either the Economizer, if you have it, or maybe the, uh, what is it, the Gold Hairpin? Or you could just use uh, X-Zone, but this has a higher hit rate. So we're going to use this. And we're going to get rid of level 20 magic. The other one was already invisible, so we didn't get to see the animation. But uh, this guy, not susceptible to instant death and is weak to bolt and did not have that reflect. So we can just throw a probably a bolt 2 spell. One thing is if you're trying, if you're finding it difficult to figure out which enemies have uh, uh, reflect on them, you could always, since we have wall rings on on everyone, is you could always cast them on yourself instead. Now the interesting thing about that is reflected spells deal 50% of normal damage, and not every single spell uh, can be reflected. Here we get the Air Anchor. We could have bet the Genji Armor to get this much earlier in the game, but I didn't really want to go out of my way to do that. Now I'm never going to be able to find it. There it is. Enemy becomes self-destructive. Basically what this does is you use this, it's a tool for Edgar, so you use this in battle, and after you use it, put down here, uh, the next turn that the enemy used it on takes will be killed by instant death if they're susceptible to instant death. So there's a thing there. Now the interesting aspect of this entire dungeon is inside these rooms there is one encounter, like a, a group of encounters. Typically you can either run into a level 90 magic, very very powerful, level 50 magic, or two specific enemies. In this specific room, you always encounter those two specific enemies. So I'm going to show them off here since their encounter rate pretty much in every other room is different. So those are the encounter rates for inside the rooms. On the normal floors, there's a different encounter rate. Here we have magic urns. Magic urns are really interesting. They're level 31. They absorb fire, ice, bolt, poison, wind, water, pearl, and earth. They have 100 HP. So the only way to kind of get around things is, well, one, all they do is cast or use items on you. They will use an item on you, and then on their next turn, they have a 33% chance of running away or using another item on you. Uh, they use status restoring. If one of your characters is dead, they can uh, uh, revive them with a phoenix down, they can use an elixir on you, potions, all that kind of good stuff. All they do is heal you. Um, they might have a counterattack, but they only have 100 HP, so it's impossible to figure out. They have instant death protection, so we can't do anything with that. So basically, your only way of handling them is... you don't have it. No, well, there's neither. Is to use something that's non-elemental. And we can't use normal attacks in here. So we're stuck using Flare. It's the only spell we can muster that will actually hit these guys and kill them. Uh, they'll run away otherwise, and then you won't get anything for the fight. But yeah, unlike pretty much every other magic pot in Final Fantasies, you don't give them elixirs. It's not going to help you out at all. All right, let's continue back up. So in the, basically, they're called tiers. Uh, each of the tiers, basically the first, uh, you know, four, or the first fourth of the floors are all uh, going to have a similar encounter uh, or set of encounters. Yeah, they're gonna cast spells. They're not really going to matter all that much. We can, uh, use this to finish off one of them. Level 10 magic is not level 10, but level 48. Weak to fire, pearl absorbs, poison, has auto float, is undead. You missed? You're not supposed to miss. All right, uh, Raz. Yes, on level 10, we can use that. Uh, they are susceptible to MP killing, and they actually have a relatively small amount of MP. 
I think it's about 300, so we might just be on the, uh... Oh yeah, more than enough, okay. Uh, what else do we want to hit this guy with? Level 20 has... Uh... Whatever it was, so we can throw X-Zone at it, or we could bounce some spells off of ourselves. It absorbs poison, so as long as we use anything else, just bounce it off. Or it can die from instant death. As you can see by the amount of uh, magic points we get after battle, uh, the amount of magic points is kind of nuts. Now there's one more enemy I have not found yet. I would like to find it here, but it is available on the next tier, so we'll try and find it there. Yeah, so that first one had one set of encounters, level uh, 10 magic to level uh, 40 magic. We've already seen this guy. Level 50 magic, he falls down real fast. Okay, poison yourself. You're undead, that'll heal you. I guess that's kind of a smart plan, but uh, not going to matter too much longer. Uh, on the second tier here, we have up to uh, level 50 magic, so we have... Uh, one more, one more and more powerful one to deal with. The early floor uh, enemies aren't much to deal with. Okay, we also have level 60 magic here. Interesting. All right, now that one's gonna use Vanish. We're gonna start off with Raiden here. Uh, level 60 magic is level 55. We to bolt, or, or sorry, that was level 40 magic. Level 60 magic is level 58. Weak to fire, absorbs ice, has auto float, and again, can be MP killed. Now, some of them can use some powerful spells. This is why we are protected uh, with auto float. Make sure that if a character dies, you immediately get that back on them. You do not want to have to deal with that. All right, so level 60, we're gonna hit with uh, fire two. Pretty sure that's level 60 there. Level 40 here. That one's weak to Bolt, so let's get our Bolt spell out. And, yeah, he didn't have Reflect. You don't really need Bolt 3 uh, or Level 3 spells. We do so much damage with our magic stats now that it just doesn't really matter. Anytime you need to get more MP back, use Osmos. That's all you need to do. And in here... We get another Genji Shield! Hooray! More Genji Shields! Apparently those magic bots can counter being killed with a flare spell by running away. Or maybe they did that the first time and I wasn't paying attention. It's entirely possible. But uh, you still gain the, uh, the magic points for defeating them. Anyway, on to the third tier. We now have access to level 70 magic. And right on cue, here he is. Uh, level 70 magic is level 56. Weak to ice and water, absorbs fire, has auto reflect, and can be inflicted with instant death. So what we're going to do here is throw out the X-Zone spell. Now I believe the X-Zone spell, or no, the any Doom spell will automatically hit on an enemy that's undead even if they're not susceptible and they'll just revive. So you don't really want that because they revive with full HP. But yeah, we can get rid of you that way. Terra to use Raiden again. Yeah, if you don't have uh, the Economizer and you don't, if you want like hero wings on everyone or something like that, you can most certainly still do that. You'll just have to cast Osmos more often. So you will learn Pearl. All right, let's keep going. Keep trudging up the long, boring hallway. At least in Final Fantasy VII, there was an item for doing this, you know, as an option. Okay, I dropped back a floor because I had neglected to show off one of these guys here. We'll start off with that. We'll go over to Rasp, finish off you and the dancer is level 30 magic weak to poison absorbs pearl can be mp killed susceptible to instant death not really too much to say um a lot of the enemies like i said use some really powerful attacks and we've basically been outfitted in a way where we don't have to worry too much until we hit the top tiers and the, the last few enemies 
Alright, I think we were somewhere around here before I decided to run back and find an old enemy that we missed. Hello! Level 90 magic! Oh, fun! Level 90 magic! Level 55 instead of 90. Nullifies Pearl Earth Water, absorbs wind, has auto reflect, and is not susceptible to instant death. So we need to do something that's not kind of the standard that we've been doing up until now. By the way, since we're dealing with someone with Auto Reflect, I'll just go over the uh, spells that are can be reflected. And this is why uh, taking like a, a bolt, uh, you know, this is up there, you need a bolt where you can, no. Taking a bolt spell like this, it deals 50% damage when it's reflected. But since it's targeting all of them, it, I'm not sure if uh, the because the split damage cuts the damage in half and then the bounce cuts, tops in half. I think it does basically 100% damage back to the enemies. If not, it might be a little bit more. I don't think it actually increases the amount of damage that you deal, though. Uh, so yeah, the spells that go through Reflect, just as a reminder, Life, Remedy, Antidote, Osmos, Drain, Dispel, Warp, which is a terrible thing, Float, Vanish, X-Zone, Quarter, Demi, Quake, Murton, which is the Meltdown spell that we don't have access to yet, Ultima, and Quick. So you can indeed bounce Flare if you want to bounce Flare. But yeah, some of these guys you're going to have to take care of and be very careful around. So yeah, he does the same thing. His bolt spell, not quite so good. Thing is, yeah, he can use Meltdown. Meltdown is non-elemental damage. Is fire elemental? It is fire elemental. Where is my protection for that? Well, he's gone. Either way, when you run into him, be scared. Be very scared. Okay, here we get Stunner. Stunner, if I remember, is a weapon of some sort that I probably won't use. Okay, here it is. It's a, uh, a dirt that randomly casts stop. It's only usable by Shadow. It's fine, I guess. Shadow should never use his normal attack. He's got things to throw that do more damage, so that's a thing. Are you ready for one more of these dragons? Probably the most underwhelming of all the dragons. This guy has two attacks. Pearl, which we already reflect, and Dispel, which can't dispel our wall rings, so all he can do is heal himself. Oh wait, no he can't. They made him susceptible to mute. He literally has no other abilities in this game. He can't cast anything. That's it! This boss fight's over! I, d I don't know why you do the things that you do, video game. <sighs> it's, it's kind of frustrating when you could do so much better, but you decide not to. Do you not have anything worthwhile casting here? I don't know, there it is. I was thinking, I was thinking of where's my, uh, thought I was on Realm's turn. So we'll just, actually I didn't even need to bounce that. I shouldn't have bounced that. Oh. Anyway, White Dragon level 71, 18,500 HP, could be killed with, I don't know, a level 1 Mog. Uh, it doesn't matter what you have. Oddly enough, there is a steal of a Pearl Lance. It's a rare steal, only you can't possibly steal in this fight. However, you can, uh, if you want to, Fight this guy on the belt later, and then you could steal it then. So that's an option. And he's done. Now, I understand the appeal of fighting elemental dragons, 
I just wish that they didn't make them so inept that there's nothing they can do against you most of the time. Because it's kind of pathetic. Now, the reason why you get the Pearl Lands after the fight is so that you don't get one like af as the battle concludes each and every time you fight them on the belt. Two dragons left, another Pearl Lance. We've already got two of them. We don't need another one, but it's there. Hell, do we have three? We might even have three. Anyway, that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Next time, we will progress through the rest of it, which only contains two more screens. But we do have a couple more enemies to show off while we're here, and uh, I just don't want to jam it all into one video. So like I said, that's all for this one. See you guys next time.